Uh, go back to... uh, and uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to start by going to the start menu and launching Excel. We're going to talk about Office and the productivity type uh, scenario. So let me open up some data that I was working with. Make this bigger. All right, so I have a spreadsheet here that's about 14, 15,000 cells. I'm going to insert a, a pivot table. And what you can see when I do a pivot table, this is pivot tables require quite a bit of processing power, and also it's a feature that is often left out of uh, of uh, you know, like say a, a lower uh, lower performance, lower feature type spreadsheet application. So yeah. things that you can see how my performance is all very very good. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm uh, generating charts, updating things, and everything happens very quickly. But this is running through emulation. Mm -hmm. So even though we're going through an emulator, a, the emulation layer, uh, we still are getting very good performance. Mm -hmm. So I can, I just brought my chart into PowerPoint. Let me actually just go like this. Let's bring open Word, and copy some text, copy that. See, get, uh, I'm not very good at using the application, but it performs very, very well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do that. All right, I'm going to uh, finish off the uh, office experience. I'm going to email this to myself to send it as an attachment. Mm -hmm. I've got a lot of these files in my inbox now. I keep on sending them every time. All right, so I'm going to send it to him. So I can go <laughs> online here. We have 7-zip. So this is an application that, uh, that a lot of people like to use for file yeah. compression, but it has nothing to do with Windows on Snapdragon or anything like that. It doesn't even know that exists. It's 32-bit x86 app. I'm going to download that. So I'm going to download, run the installer. So I mean, both 32-bit and 64-bit as well? 64-bit is not supported in the it's emulation okay. yet. Mm -hmm. It will be at, mm -hmm. some, at some point in the future. Microsoft is okay. working on enabling that. But when you enable 32-bit gigabit LTE and why, we, and why we at Qualcomm think it actually makes for a significantly better device. So I'll start off with some uh, uh, video streaming. And this is just to show, so we're streaming this in uh, 1080p. Mm -hmm. You can see, I can go full screen. And I can click around, you can see how little, how little buffering and lag there is. Yeah, so it's, very, it's all very high performance. And the idea here is that for streaming video, for any sort of cloud-based resource, mm -hmm. I can get it as quick as it can be sent to me. I can get it in as high quality as it can be sent. Mm -hmm. I don't have to worry about my connection being a, a, uh, a choke point or a throttle on, on what I can do. Okay, so you mean, uh, um, I think that's what, um, you mean, uh, uh, Windows on ARM, uh, it's a, maybe a, a driver itself is also a... You just want to download the whole video. Mm -hmm. And with Gigabit LTE, I can do that. So I'm going to my local area network because then I don't have to worry about the, uh, the internet speed that I have here. So we're going to pretend that this is a full end-to-end -end Gigabit uh, LTE network. I'm going to download this file. And you can see this is 1.9 gigabytes of data, almost 2 gigabytes of data. You can see here our speed. That's megabytes per second, not megabits. So our actual speed, so let me pull this down, let's get to the cellular here. So we're actually in that mid to high 300 megabits per second. So we're downloading actually at what is you know, a very high speed, uh -huh. Uh -huh. but this is actually not uh, an unrealistic speed for what people would actually see in, in a real life deployment. Uh -huh. This isn't the theoretical maximum of gigabit LTE, which is up uh, you know, the high 900 megabits per second. Instead, we're showing it mm -hmm. what someone might actually really achieve. Okay. And so in this case, they would get, they can download their file, and it oh. takes about, you see, about 40 seconds to download that two gigabytes of data. I see. Oh, processor? Yes. Oh, I see. It's all eight of them right there. <laughs> <laughs> and this is actually, this is actually, works well, this is exactly what I was intending to do next, so thank you for the question. <laughs> uh, but you can see, this, this big little architecture is something that's mm -hmm. new to Windows and it's uh -huh. important to make it, it a very efficient platform mm -hmm. on these small devices, or these uh, light, thin devices. Mm -hmm. Because here you can see, as I stop using CPUs, I can park them and we can start consuming less and less power. 
And I can take that really far and we can go in and talk about the, the standby. Mm -hmm. there's, there's two types of standby. There's traditional standby mm -hmm. where, uh, say, an x86 mm -hmm. processor mm -hmm. goes into a low power mode, shuts mm -hmm. down the screen, mm -hmm. and then saves the state of the application oh, so that I can quickly turn it back on and, and, and return to what I was doing. Mm -hmm. And then there's connected standby, which is what we can do, mm -hmm. where the, uh, the CPU or the, the processors uh, go down to a low power state mm -hmm. and we shut off the screen mm -hmm. and we continue to sync data uh -huh. and we continue to listen for, for voice commands for Cortana mm -hmm. and we can still offer that instant on capability oh, while consuming four or five times less power mm -hmm. than this traditional standby that's doing nothing mm -hmm. but keep state. Mm -hmm. So the, the ARM architecture mm -hmm. and, and our optimized cores, 4K video, mm -hmm. I want you to watch here. So, so, we're, so we're decoding a 4K video. You see uh -huh. a spike on all the cores? Mm -hmm. That spike is just for launching the app. Uh -huh. So you can launch as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. But you can see that my CPU mm -hmm. usage drops back down almost immediately down to almost nothing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the reason behind that is because we have discrete hardware as part of our SOC that handles video. So it doesn't mm -hmm. use CPU in there. It doesn't really even use GPU significantly. It's it uses the video engine, mm -hmm. and so and that's something that you know we've 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 been perfecting on the mobile phone side of things and mm -hmm. having uh, specific components within the SOC uh -huh. to handle different activities very very efficiently. Mm -hmm. All of that carries over into the mobile PC side as well. I see. So, so this video is HVC or something. Uh, this is uh, this is not HVC. Uh, this one actually I think is HVC. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's HEBC, but it's uh, but it's yeah. We use this as.